and welcome back to the Stereo Sound Stereogram restoration. This is part three. This time we're going to overhaul the radio and amplifier module. As you can see, it basically works, it makes noise, uh, the tune is a bit dicky. Yeah, we fetched the electronics out of this in part one, so I didn't cover it in paint stripper. <laughs> Now I'm going to turn my attention onto the actual electronics of this. Now try as I might, I've actually been looking on the internet for a service manual for this stereo sound make and I can't find anything. So I'm going to have to be a bit careful about how I go about tearing this down. There might not be any second chances. To now it does look to be actually manufactured by the company it says. So I don't recognise it as anybody else's. I mean, it might be. It might be rebranded. It happened a lot. It still happens a lot. Well, the main problems with this that I found when I was testing it was that every knob and, and every switch was dodgy. So it's not too bad, really. So what I need to do is strip these out of this unit and give them a good old clean. So you can see here we've got an amplifier. It's quite straightforward there. And all the signals coming through this board on the side. It's probably all the RF stuff for the radio. It's a simple radio on this, and it's only AM. But these switches here, these red items, these are what need to be taken off and cleaned. The trouble with stuff of this vintage, everything was that commonly, they would sold the little short wires from one piece to another, and to take this board out, it's going to be a bit of work. No matter how I go about this, a lot of wires are going to have to come off. Let's hope they're not too horrible to get back, <laughs> to get off there. In the factories I always like to wrap the wire around these little posts. Which is great for putting them on, but it makes them horrible to get off. The ground cables here all twisted together. Come on! <laughs> so I'm going to have to disconnect these wires off here mainly because <laughs> they're so short. Oh, I wish they wouldn't bend these wires over. Really annoying. Let's see if we can get this orange one off without making such a mess of it. Yes, and this black wire here. Oh, that came off quite nicely. Is that enough slack on there? Ah. That could be enough to work with. Now I've got to fetch these wires off that are attached to the switches. See if they come off nicely. So far they do. And finally this black wire here. Off you come. Come on. There you go. This desoldering tool is quicker, but there's a lot of desoldering to do here. <laughs> so I'll split this up about five times. I've got the switch pack out, so that needs to be just chucked in the ultrasonic cleaner as it is. Simple <laughs> to do really. Uh, I'm going to take all these knobs out, so I'm going to undo the nuts off here. Or well, if I can get at them. Just slacken them off with this. Maybe that's enough. Always resistance at the last one. Always. 
tip them off there. Now that module has just come free. Now we'll see what needs to be removed from here. Let that heat build up into there. Just a bit about this desoldering tool, it actually runs on compressed air, so there's a crappy compressor running all this in the background. And they clog up a lot. <laughs> Nothing's easy. Let's see how that's done. Can I get any of these out? Rather than fight these wires, I'm just going to cut them off. They're a bit easier to recover when they've got the wires off. After all that effort, I can get some machinery to do the cleaning there. Put all these bits into the ultrasonic parts cleaner. Put all the knobs and buttons in this little glass dish, just to save them dropping to the bottom of the tank. It's full of a detergent called Safe Wash, it's supposed to be safe for all the electronics and plastics. Just let it run. Just fetching these parts out now after about 20 minutes. You can see the washing fluid is about 40 odd degrees now, it's quite warm. Also quite murky because I use this stuff a lot. There's a lot of muck and gunk in here. I ought to change it soon. I'm not sure you're supposed to put your hands in it. After they've had their ultrasonic bath, they're next going for a wash under some tap water. Which I won't bore you with showing that, but once they've had a rinse, they go in the oven for a dry. About half an hour at 80 degrees. Well now we've got the parts out of the oven after they've been cleaned ultrasonically I just need to give them a bit of a loop um, because the cleaner has actually taken all of the lubrication out of these so I need to just put a little bit back um, luckily it's not bad to do really uh, the main parts of these switches because these switches actually interlock so if you press the one button and then another one they, they sort of latch and you know pop out one at a time um, but this has a little moving bar inside and it's a bit crusty um, so a little bit of oil needed. Yeah, they <laughs> at times these are totally stuck, they're not moving at all. So we'll go from here. Around here is where the oil needs to go in. You can just see the sort of spring mechanism there. So I'll just take this little bit of light oil, light machine oil. Just give it a little blob there, there and there. Then I'm going to operate them. <laughs> I'm going to give them a bit of a push, see if we can get it to actually start to accept the oil into it. Also inside you can just see the moving mechanism there. I'll give that a little touch of oil as well. Oops! <laughs> Supposed to put it in the right place. This end one doesn't quite feel nice and smooth, it's a bit Rusty. I'm thinking it might need a little bit of a bit of lube in there, which is annoying. Yeah, I might have to put a little bit of um, switch lube in there. Let's get that in there and not too much. Let's see if that helps. Oh, 
now it's going to give these pot shafts a little bit of lube as well. Just a little bead in there and just whiz it round a bit. Plastic one doesn't really need any lube, nylon being a sort of self lubricating so leave that one alone. So now we can put all these freshly lubricated parts back in. The rebuild begins. <laughs> Trying to remember which way round these go in. Must be this <laughs> must be this way up. Must be. Just wiggle it around till the holes locate. There we go. We'll just solder one to start with. Just make sure I'm getting it at the right position. Oh, we'll do one in this corner as well. Sort of opposites. Get my finger underneath. <laughs> Try not to touch a pin that I'm actually soldering. That feels good there. Yeah, they're just sat nicely now. That's good. That's good. Just gonna go ahead and solder these up. It's quite interesting to consider that you know, sort of fifty years ago someone was in a factory doing this exact job probably this black one went on this corner piece here Might need the iron to uh, push that down with. Oh, come on. There we go. And the blue one, it's a bit, <laughs> a bit awkward. That was on there. This is the one with the power switch on. to sort of wiggle that one in go for the big ground connection it needs all the heat in it there we go and just in there with this knob now should be one mega ohm, yes it is. Get my thumb underneath there, just make sure that is sat nicely, yes it is. Always worth doing that because you don't want your knobs all wonky because I've done that before <laughs> and it does look shit <laughs> so you've got a bulb here and a bulb down here these light up and this is the dial gauge for the, for the actual radio um, this should be white, that'll do nicely. Don't want much of it. Nicked it out of the vinyl printer. <laughs> this is probably cheaper stuff to use than this. Hey ho! <laughs> Needs must. It's about that far. I can neaten this up on the guillotine. There we are.
touch it. How wrong can this go? <laughs> Try and get my eyes down level with it. That looks about good. Apart from the crease. I'll look at recovering that in a moment. I think you'll find that's exactly as good as how the manufacturers did it. Pop that back on, like a job in the town. So, back to putting this tray of <laughs> knobs, the amplifier chassis back in. Hopefully that goes around it and doesn't peel the vinyl off. This is getting very satisfying at the moment. Puts a big smile on my face <laughs> when it's all going together. That is a painstaking process of putting all these wires back on. There's a lot of them and there's no way of marking them really. It's difficult to tell which pin they came from because all the pins look the same. Luckily I took lots of photos of this as it came apart so <laughs> the mobile phone makes a very good reference. You'd be impressed and surprised I didn't burn my fingers once during this whole job. For once. When that's rebuilt the radio section, um, I was going to put the cover back on, but there's something that needs sorting out. Uh, I've given this a wipe and it looks nice and shiny, but I've noticed you can actually see straight through some of this. Uh, so I'm going to have to touch this up. I mean, on the back of it, it's just sort of like painted, so I'm just going to get some black paint and just touch it up. Oh, don't need that much. I don't think there's anything special about it to know. Right, I'm just going to give this a paint. Not quite Bob Ross, but it'll do. I mean, let's fix that in. Work to do at this end, though. Now to put the wooden frame back on the amp, so it should just sit just like that, a bit of a fiddle, as normal, <laughs> so if I hold that steady, put that on there. Then the nut. It's looking more like it should have. That chassis is looking loads better now, looks really clean and nice. So if you've been following the progress of this for the previous three videos, um, you'll be looking forward to the next one, which is the last one. Part four will be the upgrades, the modifications, the addition of Bluetooth and extra inputs to this thing, really modernizing it. We'll also be putting it all back together so you'll see the final result. If you're keen on seeing it, subscribe and you'll get a notification when it comes out. Yeah, probably next week. <laughs> Catch you next time.